In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the reduce and reduce write functions provided by the underscore JS code library. In order to make use of these functions, we first have to make sure that we include the underscore JS uh, library file in our web page. We can do so by referencing it from a CDN, or we can actually download it to our local project and reference it that way. So to get started, the question is, what is reduce and reduce write? Basically, it takes a collection of items and reduces it down to a single value. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to create a little array of numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then I am going to create another variable called value, and I'm going to call underscore.reduce. And I'm going to pass in here my list of numbers, and then I'm going to have this function. All right, now, this function is basically going to perform, in this case, a calculation to sum up the total of these numbers in the array. So it's going to pass in several different parameters. The first two that we want to take a look at would be the actual last reduced value and then the actual current item that we're looking at. So as this goes through the array, it's going to basically say, 1 plus 2 is 3. Call our reduce function here and say 3 plus 3 is 6. And then 6 plus 4 is 10. And then 10 plus 5 is 15. So to set this up, we can do a return last reduced value plus item. Okay, so now if we actually come here and write this out to the console log, console.log, value and we're going to find see that we have the sum total of all the numbers in our list. We'll reload and we'll see that the value comes out to 15. What's really going on here? Let's actually come in here and say console.log last reduced value plus last reduced value. And then I'm going to do another console.log item plus item. All right, now let's see what happens when we reload this. We're going to see our last reduced value is 1. It actually doesn't iterate over the first item in the array. Instead, that's actually the initial value that's passed into the function. Now, if we take a look here, we have item 2, and that's going to be our number 2. So we have this function being called the first time with 1 being passed in as the last reduced value, and 2 being passed in as item. Now we take those and actually add them together, and we return out the number 3. Well, if we look here, the last reduced, reduced value the next time our function executes is 3, and now we're on item 3. Okay, So 3 is passed in here, and 3 is passed in here. We add those two together, the result is 6. So now 6 will be the next last reduced value, and the next item in the list is 4. So we pass in 4 here, and it's 6 plus 4, and so the next last reduced item is 10, and the last item is 5. We add the two together, and we now have 15. So that kind of demonstrates what reduce does. Well, reduce write does the same basic thing, except that it does it in reverse order. So if we actually come in here and we were to say reduce write, and then reload this page, we would see that we actually get 5 will be the last reduced value, and we get 4, we add the 2 together, we get 9, so then on the next iteration, 9 will be the last reduced value, 3 will be the next item in the list, the 2 get added together, and the next last reduced value is 12, so on and so forth until we get to 15. So basically we can do this reducing from the left, or we can do it from the right, but the end result is basically the same, it takes that array of values, in this case, and reduces it down to a single value. Now I want to show you something kind of interesting that we can do with this. Instead of dealing with numbers, let's deal with a list of colors. So we have red, blue, green, and yellow. Now what I want to do is I want to transform this list of colors into an actual HTML string where I have an unordered list with a bunch of list items, okay? Now to do this, I can come in here and I'm going to set this thing up to actually do a 
return last reduced value plus list item plus item plus list item and then I'm going to save that and we'll output the value so let's see what this looks like if we reload we'll notice that all of our list items have the li tag wrapped around them except for the first one well if we remember we know that the last the the first item never actually gets passed into this function as an item it gets passed in as the last reduced value so the question then becomes how do we know if we're on the first item well, it turns out there's actually two additional parameters that get passed in here. One of them is index, and the other one is going to be the actual list of items that we're working with. Now, for the index, since the first item being passed in is actually the second one, then the index is going to be one when we're processing the first, uh, the actual first uh, uh, iteration of the loop. So what we can do here is say if index is equal to one, then we know we're on the first item. And so what we want to do is actually take this and say equal to list item plus list item. And now I'm going to have this last reduced value will actually be wrapped in a list item element. So I'll go back to my web browser and reload now. And we'll see that all of them are wrapped in the list item element. Now, the very last thing that I want to do is actually go ahead and wrap this in an unordered list item. So there we go. There's my unordered list item. But then I run into the problem of when do I know that I'm on the last item in the list? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up as a var result equal to this. And then we'll come in here and we'll actually return result. And then I'm actually going to check to see if I'm on the actual last item. So I can say index equal to, and then I'm going to do uh, items dot length minus one. So if the index is equal to the items length minus one, then I know I'm on the last item. So I'm simply going to say result plus equal, and I'm going to close off my unordered list like this. So now I'll come back here and reload my web page. And now you'll see that I have my unordered list and I have all of my list items. And I was able to use the reduce function to not only add up numbers and do other interesting things, I can actually take it and use it to build a fragment of HTML. And my output single value for the list is now this string of HTML.